right, there it is. Been sitting a long time. Well, I know it's not a flathead, but I couldn't resist purchasing this unrestored 1969 Chevy Corvette. Original motor, original transmission. Uh, it's only got 66,000 original miles. Uh, it even has the same owner since 1971. Original paint and interior. Mike, the seller, had it running about seven years ago. All right, currently it doesn't run. I'll have to get a new battery, go through all the brakes, change all the fluids get the motor running again, uh, check out the cooling system, uh, just give it the complete once over and get this thing on the road again. Okay, we're leaving Mike's house. Now off to Flathead Terry's garage. Well, welcome to Flathead Terry's garage. As you can see, there's an open spot right here. Got the coupe over there. And here comes my next project right now. Well, it has arrived. I will go through some things here and show you, but it is now residing in Flathead Terry's garage. Got a lot of work ahead of me to get this back on the road, but I'm confident I will. Subscribe and follow along as I put the sting back in the stingray. All right, let's take a look here. Yeah, that's what it is. 66,000 original miles on it. Let me scoot over here a little bit. Here's the dash, my original gauges. Again, it needs a good cleaning. It's been sitting many years. Uh, here's the trim tag over here. All right, let's take a look inside. Mike was able to find some of the parts and other covers that he had I think this is the the bra I think that goes in the front from many years ago let me get that out then he also had the original air pump let's get that out and what else has he got oh the original jack for it let's get that out and the original covers for the distributor put some new plugs and wires in it a while ago so let's take those out all right let's see what else he's got in here he's got another pulley for some reason and let's see what else has he got here okay, here's another oh these are seat covers here get those out that was in the car the mic gave me here here we are Got the uh, fuel filter, one of the originals here. Here's some clips I see. Clips for the window lock, okay. Add to the collection, and then here's a manual. And then here are all of the other information here about the car over the years. All right, let's pop the hood here. What we got under the hood. There we are. So, 350, 350 horse. So, this is the original engine, numbers matching. You can see it's been sitting a long time, but it is original. Couple incidentals here and there. Here, let me go around to the other side. Okay, here we are. OK, 
Okay, so got some work ahead of me. So my goal today is to take the spark plugs out, take a look inside, uh, and then also probably change the oil and filter in the engine. Fortunately, Mike was able to provide me some pictures of when he first purchased it way back in 1971. Here they are, wonderful pictures showing its history going way back over 50 years. You can see some of these shots. It's got the original side pipes. Here's more of a recent picture of where it stands today. This is probably taken in the 70s. And this vet still has the original dealer emblem from Dale Chevrolet in Waukesha, Wisconsin. Here's an original ad from Dale Chevrolet that was in the local newspaper back in 1969. And when you bought a new car from Dale Chevrolet, you got this license plate on. Okay, the first order of business today was to remove the spark plugs on the passenger side. Here they are here. I used my snake right here to take a look inside the cylinders. They look really good. There's plenty of lubrication in there. So um, I'll show you a picture of one of them. There it goes. All right, well, that's draining. Get that oil filter off. See if this is big enough. It is. Oh wow, that came off easy. Okay, put the new oil filter in. Filled it up with oil ahead of time, right up to the brim. Now to put the drain plug back in. Okay, nice and snug. All done. Okay, the oil change is complete. It's quite clean in there. Okay, let's take a look at the points. I can hold the camera steady enough for you. Okay, next plan is to drain the gas out of the gas tank over there. Uh, my plan is to get an air compressor, put some air into the tank after I disconnect one of the lines way up by the fuel pump up there. So let me show you that and uh, get that gas drained out. Okay, let's take a look in the tank. Yeah, it's got some gas in there. Let's see if I can get it to focus. Yeah, let's get it out of there. That's old. Okay, my plan is to disconnect that main line right there for the fuel. Okay, the trick is to use some pressure, a couple old rags, force the uh, gas out, and here we go. And a leaky fuel filter. Okay, I don't know if you can see that, but still flushing out the bad gas. Take a look at this fuel filter here. I loosened it up. Let's see what we got. Alright. Yeah, that doesn't look too good in there. Filter looks a little crusty. Let me zoom out here a little bit. this all cleaned up okay now that I've cleaned out the entire fuel system put in a new fuel filter in both the carburetor and uh, externally here uh, the points are good enough to run I got spark I uh, have fresh fuel I put a new battery in it now it's time to fire it up My next task is to take a look into the radiator, uh, see if I can get it to focus in there. Uh, you can see a lot of slime in there. Uh, there is some antifreeze way down there. See if it can work here, if I can get the light to work. Nope. Um, nope. There it is. Yeah, all gummed up in there. 
So uh, it's kind of a soft material. I kind of bumped it a little bit with a screwdriver. So uh, now to drain it out and get it cleaned up. Okay, you can already see it doing some work already. Some of the granules are coming off there. Okay, that's 48 hours with vinegar in there. I can see some of the ports are actually starting to open up a little bit. There's the focus. Still a lot of residue there, so we'll keep working it. Okay, let me take out the thermostat. All right, let's take a look inside. What do we got? crusty. All right, we need to get some circulation in there to get that rust out of there. Okay, here's the thermostat cover. Uh, let's clean it up a little bit. Pretty bad here, so we need to clean up that surface. A couple other things I noticed too was that, that bolt is not long enough, uh, and the threads are pretty dirty on all of them too. Let's take this one out. Yeah, let's clean these up. Let's get a longer bolt and uh, get this thing ready for action. Okay, here it is. I was able to file it down with a flat file, get it all cleaned up, use the wire brush off the old Black & Decker there. That worked out pretty well, and then found a longer bolt for it down here as well. So uh, we're good to go. Okay, the coolant has been in there about six days. Take a look inside, see if I can get it to focus. There it is. Yeah, that's removed a lot of it. So I'm going to run it real quick here and uh, take a better look and then uh, drain it out. See how it's very milky, moving a lot of that scale. Okay, here's the old radiator here. Uh, pretty rough shape, a lot of leaks. Uh, after all those attempts to try to flush it, no way. So, here's the new aluminum one here. Looks good, shouldn't have any problems with it. Looks like it matches up uh, with the old one, as you can see from there to here so now time to install okay i ordered some radiator bracket cushions here they are i'll get those installed i got this one on already okay i installed some cardboard over to protect those precious fins okay radiator is in no problem now to put the shroud in okay now that i had the shroud out i thought i'd clean it up inside so uh, used some soap and water, got it all clean on both sides. Uh, real nice, right back to where it was originally. Now let's go back, and some of the foam strips were coming off here and here, so I used some spray adhesive right here uh, to help hold those in place. So uh, we're good to go as far as the shroud is concerned. Okay, off camera, I was able to install the shroud and of course the new radiator, uh, there it is. Then also I installed new hoses, new belts over there as well. And then you'll see that shiny Chevy orange water pump in there too. As I refilled uh, the radiator, uh, I actually started the leak out of the weep hole out of the uh, water pump. So I replaced it 
we're all fresh to go. Uh, I just fired it up. I'll fire it up again and uh, we'll check the temperature. All right, let's go. All right, I've had it running for about 10 to 12 minutes already. And uh, so far, that's as far as the uh, temperature gauge has gone. so good I think we're good with the cooling system and now on to the brakes as you can see this is pretty rusty I took the cover off here take a look inside yeah, it's not looking so good uh, these are pretty cheap so I'm gonna replace this looks like the original and uh, we'll go from there okay here's the front right Looks like it needs some work. Looks like it's been sitting there quite some time. Although uh, this has been greased and well maintained through the years, uh, this will have to be uh, redone entirely. Okay, here's the right rear. And here's the left front. Okay, here's the driver's side front. My whole plan here is to remove the 258's head bolts over here. Uh, to be able to pull this whole assembly off and then thankfully this is lubricated out here pretty well uh, I'm gonna have to disconnect this hose and replace all the hoses as well so let's see how this goes okay I was able to get the rotor off there's the remnants of it I have some WD-40 working on that connection there uh, here's the caliper itself pretty rusty crusty a lot of life left in those pads, but uh, no, that's all going to get replaced. Okay, you can tell that the rear brakes are the originals. Uh, they still have the rivets in here that mount the rotor to the hub itself. So to remove these, you basically get a center punch, get it as close to the center as possible, drill them out with a 5 16 inch drill about a quarter inch uh, in or so. And then you get a bigger drill. Uh, I think this is 7 16 and drill out the head and that'll pop out and then you're able to extract it. Let's see if my plan works.
did not want to come off. All right, the emergency brake is where the problem is there. I have to fix that finally. All right, yeah, you can see why the uh, parking brake was sticking up there with all that rust and corrosion on there. Okay, I thought I would run a tap through there to clean it out. Okay, I have the master cylinder in and I want to bleed it so I got one of these kits here I'm gonna hook that up and take a look and see how that works okay I've installed the bleeder kit now I got to put in the brake fluid and start bleeding okay I put in the brake fluid and just like the instructions said was to let the air bubbles come through uh, the bottom of the piston of the master cylinder so that's what's happening right now Okay, seems to be done bubbling. Got all the air out of it. Okay, brakes are bled. Here's the Delco calipers all installed. I'll re-clean up the rotor there. It's a little rusty from sitting, but uh, other than that, it's ready to go. We'll put the wheels back on and test them out. All right, I have bled all the brakes. Let's check out this pedal. Look at that. That thing, it barely even moves, and this is with it not running at all. So it's solid as can be. That's awesome. Very excited about that. Hey subscribers and Flathead, Flathead Terry here. Hey, working on my 69 Corvette here. Need to replace these tires and to get these rims back to original condition. They're pretty rusty. So follow along in this episode as I get some new rubber put on the, the old Stingray. Okay, now with the wheel off, let's take a look at that date code right there. That is the 20th week of probably 1993. So these tires have got some, uh, some age to them. Pretty darn old. Okay, I had the tires removed from the rims down here. I wanted to show you a few things. First of all, there's the date code down there, which I showed you earlier. Uh, here's the inside of the rim. So these are 15 by eights, and then again, date code again. Uh, these will be sandblasted and repainted back to the original color. Okay, I'm at the sandblaster. There it is. Close it up.
Okay, back from the sand blaster. Got them all done, cleaned up real nice. There we go. You can see some of the codes here. A little bit easier to see. Uh, here's the other one here. Let's lift this up a little bit where you can see it in the sun. There it is right there. K19. Then there's a 30 at the end there and the AZ. Um, that's just some of the codes. So now on to primer. Okay, here's the paint I used for the wheels. Here's the model number down here. It'll help you out. That's the Argent Silver for the rally wheels. All right, got some new rubber on those wheels. All set to go. I'll put them on, check them out. Did a nice job. Okay, been doing some work on the hubcaps. Here we go, the center pieces on these rally wheels. And you can see this is what I started with. Uh, this has you know, been sitting in a garage for a long, long time, decades, and a uh, little soap and water, and a little bit of this Nexon metal polish, and uh, you get this. So all back to original looking, um, and again, this is what I started with, a little bit of elbow grease, and here's the result. So let me get the other three done, and uh, we'll get them back on the bed. And there they are all cleaned up. All right, there they are, trim rings installed, hub installed fresh tires rebuilt those rims there they are they look great okay next up is the oil pressure gauge uh, looks like that's frozen over here uh, i'm gonna have to take this panel out right up through here and uh, remove that to access it i know there's some gears in there so they need to be uh, lubricated and uh, get that mechanism working again okay i removed the screws and if you can look way down in there, you can see where the oil line comes into the gauge down there. All right, so I got to remove some screws and then I'll have access to pull it out. Okay, I've taken the bezel off and now I can access the oil pressure gauge. And while I'm at it, I'm also take the clock out too and lubricate that and get that working again. Okay, I was able to get the gauge out. I'll take a look inside, lubricate that, and you can see there's a little gear, big gear that runs the little gear. So uh, let me clean it all up and see if I can free it up. Okay, while well, I got the gauge out, I wanted to confirm that there is actually oil coming through that line and it's not plugged. Well, I just ran it, and as you can see down there, there is. You can see a lot of debris down there. So, uh, looks like I just flushed out the line. Let me get that over here where you can see it. Yeah, so uh, I'll run it some more, but uh, yeah, you can see how just that debris in there may have messed up the, uh, the gauge a little bit. So, let's get that all cleaned up and lubricated, and I'll put this back. There we go. What I'm going to do, too, is put a little bit of the greaser down there to clear out that uh, debris. Okay, I just put a little cotton swab in there. You can see some of the debris coming out of there. Trying to clean her up carefully. Okay. Carefully, I'm not going all the way into that hole, I'm just trying to clean it out. Yeah. 
Well, it looks a lot better in there. All right. Well, a couple drops here. It's a very light oil. Okay. There we go. Sucked in a little bit. I'm going to wipe off some of that residual. Okay, the mechanism is right in here that turns that big gear. So I'm just going to carefully move that back and forth a little bit. This is on that band there. It's not too much. You'll have to wipe off that extra oil there. Okay, that's moving much better now okay now to clean up okay there's two screws that hold that clock in right there and there okay now with the clock out I wanted to show you first of all what you have to do is to take this cover off Pull this tab back. There's a little dimple here. You gotta pull that back with the pliers. There's another one over here, another tab you pull back. And over here is another dimple. Once those are pulled back, you can carefully pull out the clock assembly. Now, a couple of things to look for. One of them is what was the problem with mine, and I'll show you here if I can get the camera to focus. But basically, I'm going to try to point to it here. There's a spring right here, attached here. It loops around way inside here. Keeps going around. I'm going to keep spinning here. You can see it way inside here. Keeps going. It's that black spring. I keep going. You can kind of see it right here. It attaches to this post right here. Mine was broke off right here. So that mechanism uh, that the spring attaches to will uh, actually help the second hand move. And as that moves, of course, it runs the whole mechanism. So what I did is I just bent that. I uh, made a new loop on here and reattached it, and that seems to work properly. Then, number two, another thing is, is you get your meter out. I'm going to spin this around. Where's the best angle to get this? Here we go. Okay. Uh, another thing is the coil here. This can burn out. And one way to test it is with your ohm meter. So get your uh, ohm meter out, and what you can do is put the probes between here and here, this will give you a couple of ohms of resistance to measure uh, all of this wire inside. So uh, if there's no measurement between here, there's no resistance, no ohms, then 
if it's open, well then of course this is faulty and you're going to have to rewire it uh, re or replace it. So those are two tips I see uh, that will help uh, you service your clock. Okay, here's some additional information you might find useful. Also in here, I want to show you right through here, is contact points. So we have the solenoid here. When that gets energized by these two contacts here, then this assembly here goes back over here and puts tension on that spring, that black spring in here. And then it runs for about a minute. And then this arm here slowly goes back and gets energized again. And the process starts all over again, comes down, and then the spring takes over and runs. So I'm going to show you that operation right now. Also, I wanted to show you that there are contacts right here from the solenoid to this point here. And I want to make sure that you know that you can sand these down a little bit to make sure that there's good contact between these two. If there isn't, the clock will not run. So what I've done here, I have a tiny piece of 600 grit paper right here. So I'm going to carefully, carefully stick it in there, right in between those contacts. I can get it in there. It's There we go. Sand this down a little bit and carefully sand the other side. This particular clock has uh, been sitting for a lot of years. So let's try it out. Supply power. Okay, here we go. I have the ground wire just tied to the metal frame here. And then we'll run the power over here. So you can watch this contact right here. Okay. Now you can see the mechanism in the background running and how the second hand here, I'll disconnect the power and see, runs all by itself. There we go. So again, that spring is being activated and slowly bringing that contact back, that whole mechanism, and it starts all over again. So there you have it. Now you can repair yours. All right. Okay, before I assemble, I wanted to double check. I connected the orange wire, and there we go. Clock's working perfect. Okay, there we go. Pressure gauge working good. Got that clock working as well. Look at that thing go. All right, we're in great shape. Awesome. In this episode, you're going to see if Flathead Terry was able to put the sting back in this stingray. In episode one, you saw me get this 350 cube, 350 horse Corvette engine running again. In. And in episode two, you saw me replace this original radiator with an aluminum replica radiator. And you saw me replace the master cylinder and replace all four rotors, pads, and calipers throughout the Corvette. And in episode four, you saw me put new tires and rebuild those rally wheels back to their original condition. And in episode five, you saw me get the clock and oil pressure gauge working again. In this episode, Flathead Terry finally gets this 69 Corvette Stingray out of his garage.
Okay, here we go. There's that interior. Yeah, first thing I'm gonna do is get that vacuum to it. Check it out. Pretty dusty, pretty dirty. Get all that stuff back there. Yeah, let's take a look over here. Yep, yep. Let's get it all cleaned up. All right, as I cleaned out the car, found a couple little trinkets as I usually do. Got some coinage there, 46 cents. Well, that's kind of nice. Peps, blue ribbon, label there. Of course, a spare key for the gas cap. That's pretty nice. A little pull tab, the old pull tab style there. You can barely see that a little blurry. Of course, a hairpin, some other stuff. Huh? I wonder if he won anything. Hmm. Okay, and this is after. Did a lot of cleaning. There we go. Check it out. Well, the gauges work now, as you've seen in some of the videos. Looking good. Take a look back there as well. All of that's been vacuumed and cleaned out. All of the trays. Take a look at the dash here. Yep. Yep, and it does say... 67,000 original miles on it, so all good there. So, turned out real nice.